Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to go over questions 79 and 80 of section 3 of the pink booklet. So this is a question about antimicrobial resistance, and we've been given these sort of five factors here that can affect the patterns of resistance evolution. I want to talk about them first. Um, so the, I've summarised them here. So the first one is the duration of the contagious period. So let's think about what would happen if it was longer and if it was shorter. So this is the amount of time, obviously, that someone could pass it on to someone else. But if the duration of the contagious period is um, shorter, then that means the person might be able to fight it off a little bit quicker. Two says the prevalence of drug treatment. Um, so that's the ease with which a patient would be able to get access to the drug and the amount of the drug that's used generally in the population. Three is the degree to which treatment reduces the transmission of the infection. So if the treatment stops you from spreading the disease, of course, that would have an influence on the uh, resistance. Four says the degree to which the development of resistance reduces the competitive fitness of the pathogen. So if the pathogen becomes resistant, if there's this evolution, this genetic change um, to the pathogen, it might not be as... Um, problematic or symptomatic. The competitive fitness is its ability, of course, to sort of contend with your immune system or any other um, bacteria, for example. And um, if it has evolved to become resistant, does that then make it less effective in other senses? And then five says the probability that a drug sensitive microorganism becomes resistant when treated. So that one sort of speaks for itself. 79 asks, with all other factors held constant, in which of the following situations is contagiousness most likely to lead to resistance? So if we were going to have a longer duration of the contagious period, um, that means a person's going to have this problem for a lot longer, this um, microorganism for longer. And that means there's going to be more time for the bug to develop this resistance. So if you're going to have a look at whether or not one can influence the evolution of resistance, it can if it is a longer duration of time. What about factor four? And of course, this is the degree to which the development of resistance reduces the competitive fitness of the pathogen. So if it reduces the, the competitive fitness, um, that would be bad from the perspective of the pathogen. Um, contagiousness is, of course, the ability for it to spread. So if that's going to be most likely to lead to resistance, you want it to be able to be competitive so they can continue to spread. So you'd want this, in this case, to be low. So if you have uh, one being long and four being low, then that gives you an answer for 79 of B. Okay, so then looking at the other question, which is question 80, it compares genital herpes with influenza. So we're told that genital herpes is a long contagious period, a reduced fitness of the virus after it becomes drug resistant, and a low probability that treatment will lead to resistance. Then influenza A, we're told, has a short contagious period, unlike genital herpes. Um, there's no reduction in the fitness of the virus after it becomes drug resistant, which obviously is a bad thing, and a high probability that drug resistance which will develop which is bad as well. So compared with influenza A, genital herpes is most likely to fall resistance. Why? Okay, so we talked about factors one and four already, but the other one that's mentioned in the question or in these answers that are given is factor five, and that's the probability that a drug-sensitive microorganism becomes resistant when treated. And um, we're told that genital herpes has a low probability that treatment will lead to resistance. And we're told then um, that influenza A has a high probability that drug resistance will develop. So factor five would tell you that genital herpes is likely to evolve resistance more slowly. And this is because of this low probability that treatment will lead to resistance. But also because resistance is less likely, um, that on top of the fact um, that genital herpes has reduced fitness once it's become drug resistant. It means, again, that genital herpes is going to evolve resistance more slowly than influenza A. And the two arguments that best support that obviously are going to be 
um, factor four and factor five. And that means that the answer for number 80 is going to be D. And I just want to rule out the other ones first. Um, A says general herpes is more likely to evolve resistance because of both one and four. So we're told that uh, general herpes has a longer duration of the contagious period. And we talked about how that would um, lead to resistance. But number four um, says that the degree to the development of resistance reduces the competitive fitness of the pathogen. This longer contagious period um, would mean that it would um, develop more slowly instead. Then B is talking about four and five with their arguments why it might develop more slowly. And then C is talking about one and four, but four, of course, um, does lead to developing more slowly, but one doesn't. So that means that the answer is going to be D. So that was quite.